Electronic Gears is the latest in mountain bike technology, with some drivetrains being fully wireless, not to mention droppers. Yeah, but there's one product that isn't wireless, and that is the brakes. So, <gasps> look at this. Ooh. Wireless brakes. <laughs> this is scary. 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 Drop it in here. Now, before we delve into that top secret box, let me explain how we got here. Now, drivetrains and brakes started as mechanical cable actuated components. So basically you'd pull on a brake lever or a shifter that would pull on a cable and it will in turn move your derailleur or the calipers on your brakes. Now, Brakes moved on to hydraulic quite quickly because the problem with a cable is that it can stretch and fade over time. And that's not something you want with brakes. So when we moved over to hydraulic, it made them more powerful and more precise. And then with the derailleurs, we had electronic gears not so long ago at Shimano DI2 worked by sending electronic signals down wires and SRAM moved on to Axis and then T-Type Eagle transmission where it's completely wireless because what you get there is arguably a very precise drivetrain actuation uh, where you don't have to rely on a cable and you don't get the fade of that cable stretching and wearing over time too. With so many brands removing cable ports from their frames and switch into the universal derailleur hanger, it's clear that wireless is here to stay. But do we want it in brakes? Let's find out. Blake. It's a thing now, Anna. What have you done? I have made a dream a reality. Like everything <laughs> that everyone's been t thinking about, talking about, I've actually gone out and done it. Not you've just sat there and thought about it. A fully wireless bike. So you've made wireless brakes. This is Mark One prototype. <laughs> How have you done this? Oh, Anna, where do I start? <laughs> it, 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 bas basically, it all starts right here. Yeah. My, my love yeah. excitement for radio controlled cars. I bought this for my my son for his <laughs> fifth birthday. It's actually a really cool one, it's really fast. But the cool thing about it was watching my son, right, mess around with the controller. Because he's never driven a radio controlled. So he was like trying to work out how to make the car do what he wanted to do, but he had to use his hands to do all this to move the car around and I was watching I was fascinated trying watching him like accelerate and reverse and brake and turn in but I was watching his finger on the accelerator and I was like holy crap light bulb moment <laughs> and I was like Charlie Charlie can I have the control and he was like yeah okay and I, he gave it to me and I grabbed it and I just put it on its side and I did that and I was like that's it. There's my there's my grip. There's my lever, and now I just had to make this work on a caliper, and that's where it kind of all started. Amazing. Radio controls. So with the radio control technology, there's obviously the controller and yeah. a receiver. So do they pair with each other? Do they run on radio frequencies, or how does it work? That's a question I don't know. Oh, I, no, no, no. It's fine. I I I just. Basically, it pairs up with it, and with the receiver over there, you can pair as many receivers with this. So you can have multiple oh. cars with the same kind of receiver, and you just have to press pair, and, and it'll pair to this. So if this is on, make sure one is on, and it'll pair to that receiver down there. I actually don't know what frequency. It's a, I don't know, digital portable RC system. It's 2.4. GHZ, which I don't know what that means. So all the techno babble, <laughs> all about that. Yeah, it's, it's somewhere on screen. But that's that's how that connected. But there was one thing because obviously you've got two servos in a radio control car. So you've got well, you got one with the speed controller. You got one servo, which is the steering, which moves the arms and stuff to turn the wheel. And that's what I wanted. I wanted the servo 
to work with the accelerator because the accelerator is a digital speed controller in there that tells the little brain to do its thing to send the power to the to the motor and i was like how the heck are you going to do that and i was, literally you pull out one connector you pull out the the steering one and you put it in the speed one in the receiver and it just does the same thing Amazing. So I think people's worry or what we've discussed before with electronic brakes is kind of thinking too much about electronic gears because they're they're the good thing about electronic gears is they're really sharp. Yeah. They're all they're really well indexed and that's a good thing. But that's not something you want in your brakes. And I think people think that it's going to be a light switch just on or off. Yeah. But that's not the case, is it? No, it's not. It's <laughs> modular, but it's soulless modulation. Mm. I call it solars because there is no resistance within the lever because with a hydraulic you can feel the hydraulics getting stiffer stiffer there's some resistance so you can modulate your brace with the feel through your finger whereas this there is none of that that's why hence it's solars and you basically have to train your brain I haven't actually ridden it on the trails yet you can see my bike is super clean I've ridden on the streets and it felt good there and I can you know slow down gently or I was doing endos. I can really? endo it. Yeah. So it's it's a matter of training the brain to work out how I should pull the trigger. So have you had any problems with it yet in testing or in building? What was it like to build, for example? <laughs> I, you just got to go with the process of just building stuff like this because it's out the box thinking. Um, first off, the levers. So I knew. <sighs> Let me talk about the process yeah. I did it with. So I started off with the caliper. I started building it off the Scout, my new proof Scout, which is a hardtail. So I got some really thin steel plate because I'm good with steel. I'm good with wood because you can use these materials quite easily. And I've got a welder and I've got, I don't have all the fancy stuff, but I've got stuff that can make stuff. So I started off with some mild flat steel and I started bending it and manipulating it and work out where I need to put this humongous servo. So I went out and I bought the strongest servos I could find because I thought I needed the power to slow myself down. So I went with 150 kilo servos. These servos are like got steel gears all inside or, you know, they're all stainless steel gears inside. So super strong, no plastic. Because if you've got plastic and you've got a lot of pressure going through that, like a lot of pull force and I don't want to rip out a servo uh, and it's got an aluminium arm and everything like that so I was like perfect I'll buy two of those and then I started thinking how the hell am I going to get the power from a battery into the servo from the receiver and and then I just went into a pit of electronics that I thought I'd never go into but I had to so I bought this little box thing which I got told you have to via some forums and I was like okay I'll buy one of these things which is the UBC S or SC anyway it's on the screen techno babble um, <laughs> but then that was all the gubbins down the bottom with a little battery it was from a drone and then the caliper is a cable actuated hydraulic caliper so I thought these were perfect and they're actually when TRP launched this gravel Hydro, uh, caliper so you could run cables through your bike but then have the power of a hydraulic caliper brake mm. and it's got GCN's name on it which I thought was quite cool so I um, took them out of the office and I started building this platform at the back and then I did I just copied and pasted to the front but then I came to a point where I installed it on this bike which was last night <laughs> and uh, I was up till 11 30 p.m because the thing I built didn't fit this bike because of the post mounts on the brakes were like this on the hardtail and on this, it's like this. So it just dug in the frame, so I had to cut it up and build another one. Here's a few pictures of that. All right, how did you build the levers then? I left the hardest one to last <laughs> because down there it's just like one big, big item and the servo and the caliper. I know where the caliper's going. I just needed to make sure where the servo went to pull the cable. Up there, I stewed over this a lot. So I wake up quite early anyway. So I sat in my garage with cups of tea, thinking, brainstorming, how the hell am I gonna mount all this? And I thought, because I took apart one of these controllers, not this one, I bought 
other one. So I bought another one just in case I broke one, so or burnt <laughs> it out. Um, I took it apart and I was like, oh, maybe I can use the plastic and like to house all the bat, all these bits up here work perfectly fine. So I can actually trim the brake. So if it's rubbing, I can trim it out so it can not rub anymore, which is pretty cool. And I kept all the noises, which we'll come to in a bit. Um, and I was like, where that, I, I don't want it to be too ghetto, even though it looks ghetto. I didn't want to cut out plastic and melt it because it just looks horrible. So I took the brains out, took everything out, and I was like, okay, I need to build a little aluminium box for this. So I had some scrap aluminium. Build aluminium for the brains and the antenna, that's what this thing is. And then I just hot glued inside so there wouldn't be any contact to all the little bits on the back of them, the chip ball, whatever it is. And then I just glued it in there. Uh, but to mount, to mount it to the bar like a normal brake, I had some uh, gusset brakes from my dirt jump days. And I had a few of them laying around, a front and a rear, and I just basically cut it in half. You know, you get these profiles of things cut in half. There's some on the desk at work. You can see all the internal workings. You're like, oh, this is cool. When I cut it, I was like, oh, this is cool. Because <laughs> you can see all the channels where all the liquid would go when you pull the lever, which was quite cool because I'm getting rid of that and going wireless. Well, you've gone wireless. I have. And, uh, well, I guess you better try them at some stage. Oh, yeah, I better. Hopefully <laughs> I don't lose a battery because there's... Well, I did find you need some fail-safe. This is why probably the, the industry yeah. hasn't done it because it's... There's nothing here to like stop you. Like if that goes wrong. Mm. So what failsafes do you have? Again, first thing in the morning, <laughs> cup of tea. <laughs> I was sat there and I was I was actually working on the front and I was plugging in stuff and I plugged in the rear and I went. <clears throat> I was like, oh, huh, that's weird. Then I turned on the controller and I went back to normal because you need to centre a servo. So when you turn it on, it'll go to wherever it was. And then you know, okay, that's where it's centered. Or if it doesn't move, then you know where it's centered. If you take the power off, turn the power off your control, it'll move to center on the servo because that's where its brain would say where it's going to go. Then you would move the arm to where you want it. But I didn't know this and it was all by fluke. So turn, I put plugged it in first and it moved and I was like, Okay, that must be center. Then I turned it on and then it trimmed itself back to where it was set with the controller up the top. And I was like, bloody hell, there's my first fail safe because you need two, one for up there, one for down here, in my head. So if I lose a battery, old mm. Jeff Bezos battery underneath here, if I lose one of them, that means there's no power there. That means the, the rear would trim to shut. So I would skid or come to a halt. So there's a first fail safe. So you can actually do that to lock on the rear, but in the front you need to trim it. So don't lock up because you go over the handlebars and that would oh. not be good. So you could just like, if I lose a, a Jeff Be Bezos battery, <laughs> it will literally slow me down. It'll be like start to bind instead of lock. Wow, smart thinking. Well, that just happened there you like, go. like in, that. There you have it, our in-house inventor, uh, GMBN inventor, Blake Samson. World's <laughs> first exclusive on wireless brakes. I know, look at it. Uh, it looks amazing. Obviously, it's a Mark 1. Mark you one. reckon you can improve this already? 100%. If there's any like 3D printer peeps out there, manufacturers that want to get involved and do it, some <laughs> collab, <laughs> we need one. I'll make something. Right, well, I want to see you ride it. I want to see how oh, it works. I'm a bit scared about that. Yeah, I'm scared helmet. for you. Helmet. Yeah. yeah. Protection. Full face, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> you had some normal breaks. All well, right. Hey, cool right. thing is, right, this is weirdly off topic. We could do a challenge, okay? So uh, we can get rid of these. Oh, no. And you can have one of these and connect it to my bike and you can... You can control my brakes. Oh. How horrible is that? Okay, hit that like button if you want to see us control Blake's brakes on the trail. <laughs> and then Blake will break. Hopefully not. <laughs> no, not completely. I'll get my helmet. <laughs> Thank you.
Well, there you have it. The first, the world's first world's fully first. wireless here. bike. <laughs> yeah, sooner here. Uh, but I think I need to say that this is not an instructional video. Don't try this at home, kids. Nope. Uh, but if you do want to see the build, where do they go? Head over to GMBN and you will see how I made it through the whole process of how this manifested <laughs> and ended up on my bike. And do hit that like button if you want to see more from Blake building stuff like this. Yes.